Hi guys, I'm Blair from GoodSignal.com uh, and today I want to talk to you about why it's so powerful to give your users control over their web experience and um, why it's going to become more and more popular in the future to enable people to personalize their web experience, not just online generally, but on your specific website. Um, these sorts of concepts are already in use by people like the BBC, uh, BBC and that's why we're going to walk through this particular homepage together. And I'm also going to show you um, the Amazon um, homepage as well because you know, they've got this personalization thing going on there too. I think uh, as time goes on we're going to expect this more and more um, and I think uh, you know, the sooner um, individual businesses and website owners can in incorporate these sorts of features into their own sites, you know, the better place you'll be for... Uh, for being thought of as a, as a good website rather than one that people tend to skip over. So diving straight in then, um, this is a news-based website, um, but there are lots of news-based websites, but the BBC is probably one of the more popular ones and people quite often cite it as being a favorite website. One of the reasons for that is, let's say for example, I'm not as interested in news as I am in weather and for me, I like to see stuff on the left that interests me most. So with the BBC website, I can click and I can drag and I can move the weather over to the left. I've now got children and weird and wonderful over here. Actually, I, I kind of want the news there. Um, radio's okay. Don't really care about the time. Let's put the radio over there. So within a couple of mouse clicks, I've personalized the entire home page to present the, uh, you know, the content um, you know, to me in a manner which I want to receive it and in a manner which um, is prioritized in terms of a hierarchy according to what I want, um, not what the BBC wants. So that's pretty cool. Um, with the new section as well, I can take this, well in fact with most of these sections, I can take this even further and I can personalize the type of content that I get, uh, get shown. So I've got entertainment there, maybe I want science and nature and technology as well, I can, I can press save on that, that's pretty cool. And here we go, the, uh, you can see there that the, um, you know, the categories of information that have now been presented to me are exactly what I personalized up here through the, through the edit button. So I've personalized the layout and I've personalized the type of content that has been shown to me. The reason why this works for the BBC and the reason why giving me the power to do that is going to make me come back to the BBC is I don't have to go to other places. I don't have to come along to the BBC and go, mm, not really sure I like the way they've done that or I wish I had it another way and maybe I'll go find that on some other site. The BBC have given me the power to change this around so that I don't need to go anywhere else because what I need is right here. If we look at the Amazon website now, thinking about personalization um, and being focused on the user, as soon as I come to the site, it, it recognizes that I've been here before. Hello, Blair Kane, blairsamazon.co.uk. So, you know, it's all about me. This is my website and this is my shopping experience and it's all tailored for me. New for you, inspired by your wish list, recommendations for you in books. So it remembers my browsing history and it's presenting me with options which are which should be relevant to what I'm interested in. It may not be what I'm um, after in this particular visit, but at least they're having you know, at least they're making an attempt at showing me some stuff which is likely to interest me. The stuff about the wish list is pretty cool, and I think all e-commerce websites should have have a facility like this. It enables people to pick up from where they left off, and you can see up in the top right here is a key button. Yeah, I can just click on wish list. And we all know that on the Amazon site, as you're looking at an item, you can add it to your wish list. To uh, it's kind of like walking around the supermarket, putting things in your, uh, you know, in a in a basket, which you can then leave on a shelf and and go back next time, and it'll still be there. You don't have to, you know, hide the biscuits behind all of the uh, the boxes of cereal. Um, uh, so, so there we go. Um, so for an e-commerce website, a personalized experience that is automated is really, really good and one that enables you to take more control over that experience by um, you know, a wishless facility is even better. So that's really all I wanted to cover. If you can grab a hold of the um, how to personalize the experience for your users and if you can build this technology into your own website and make people, you know, give people the power to control their own experience on your site, then I think you'll be well placed um, going into the future. So um, I'm Blair Keane and this was Good Signal.